Oh, that's the biggest spider I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a bulb planter thing. It's just got a pointy stick. It's a pointy stick, that's what it is. Oh, I just killed them all. <laughs> I'd like to lie under here sometimes when it's raining. <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma. This is my allotment plot in South London and I just vlog all about my progress here and what I'm getting up to. Um, so if you're new to my YouTube channel and you've just got an allotment plot or maybe you want to grow some fruit and vegetables for the first time or even some flowers, I grow a lot of flowers here too, then subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me along and uh, yeah, we can, we can whack it all in together. Very exciting today, very exciting news. I think you've probably just seen it, but a lot of the tulips are starting to flower, which is um, a very good sign that spring is here. Spring has arrived in the UK, which is amazing. The temperature is definitely on the way up, um, which is fantastic. But yeah, I'm gonna show you some of the tulips that flower because they are stunning. These ones here were the ones that I noticed straight away as I came to my plot this morning. Aren't they beautiful? They're like this lovely kind of orangey, red colour, just beautiful, stunning. So those ones have definitely well and truly flowered now, fantastic. These ones here have been growing for a little while and one of them has finally decided to show us its colour and it's just this lovely purple colour, just beautiful. And then just behind, there's loads of tulips coming up around my spinach and my chard, uh, which I actually forgot were here, to be honest. And so they flowered, they actually look quite nice together, I think. I feel like I've discovered a little hack for growing tulips if you grow them in between spinach and chard. Look at that, just stunning. How nice would it be to like pick some tulips and some spinach and chard and just have, have it in a vase together for spring? Wouldn't that be nice? I might actually try that to be honest. Look at these guys, one up, one down there and one up there waiting for me to feed them. I see you. I see you in there. All right, all right, I'm coming. Just don't give me a minute, these robins. They just don't give me a minute. Honestly. Mm, all right. Mm. Okay. Right, I brought some compost over yesterday. I say me, my husband kindly drove it over to the plot. So what I've done is I've emptied out an entire 100 litre bag of peat-free compost onto either side of my pumpkin archway because remember I said the soil was so bad there. Um, and that's made me feel a bit more confident about this now. So that's just so much more compost right over here. And I think hopefully if I just leave it on top like this, it will kind of dig into the ground itself. The rain will bring it down, the worms will bring it down. Um, and that will sort the compost out, hopefully ready for pumpkins. Same here on the other side as well. This has now been completely filled. Um, so it's had quite a lot of new compost put on it. So hopefully that will improve the soil. I have a bag for this bed here and I do have some cardboard. Now this bed here is where my sweet corn is gonna go. I get a lot of questions asking if you're too late to put cardboard down and then do like, like prepare your beds basically. And you're not at all, no, not at all. Do it now. Right, super quick word on cardboard because I do get a lot of questions about the use of cardboard at an allotment plot. There's a couple of rules to follow if you want to use it. A lot of people get very worried about the chemicals and cardboard and stuff and the truth is there's, there's chemicals everywhere guys. I just don't think you're going to have a completely chemical free garden. Um, you can really try but I live in the middle of London. There's like pollution flying over here and aeroplanes going over. Like it's never going to be totally organic. I try to keep it as organic as I can. I do believe in cardboard. I think it's a great weed repre repressor. Um, and I think it's also really good to add goodness to the soil. It's brown. And if you think of compost, you put brown stuff and green stuff together and it makes compost. Well, this is brown. There you go, sorted. So, a few things to think about when you're using cardboard. First of all, take off all the sticky tape and all of the sticky labels because they will not rot down. They will do nothing for your soil. Secondly, 
don't choose any shiny cardboard. Shiny cardboard is like, you know, like the freezer, anything like fish finger packets and um, ready meal cardboard sleeves um, and some toy um, toy boxes as well. I've got that shiny coating on it. Don't use any of that cardboard because that has been coated in a chemical to make it shiny. Um, it could possibly be on some other cardboard, but it's definitely on shiny cardboard. So don't use that stuff. Okay, any shiny cardboard don't use. What you want to use is the, the matte cardboard. This is an Amazon box. I always use the Amazon boxes. You see it's got the corrugated in the middle. That's how I make sure my cardboard is okay basically but it's up to you if you want to use cardboard or not it's a personal choice that's why I use it and that's how I use it there we go let's go and whack all that down my own hair now right there we go that's that bed topped up it probably needs a lot more compost but I think that's a pretty good start to be honest it's definitely looking a lot better than it did before and I think hopefully because sweet corn's going in it and sweet corn doesn't have to go out till later on in the year by the time I get around to planting that it should um the cardboard should have rotted down it should be fine so it's another bed ticks off the list excellent right on to the next job Right, next job of the day is actually on my original allotment plot. Um, oh God, I keep getting this jumper mucky. My husband said, don't wear it today, but I was like, it's my spring jumper. It's from Bowdoin, if you want to know. And it's just the jumper, it's my new spring jumper. It makes me feel so springy, but I keep getting it muddy. So, so annoying. Um, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, who wears a new jumper to the allotment plot? Well, I do, I do, okay. I brought myself some more sweet peas at the weekend because I haven't planted it, I haven't sown any from seed this year. Um, these ones were overwintered, so they're a lot bigger. So they were autumn sown um, and they were four for four for four pound, so a pound each, which is pretty good just from a local garden centre. Um, and I'm going to put them over that archway over there and any spare that I have are going to go over the teepee as well, just to add some more. Um, but these are the sweet pea, the Spencer mix, so they're the lovely smelling ones. So last year I had sweet peas all over this archway and it was so beautiful. It was like the entrance to my allotment plot and I loved it. So I'm going to do the same thing this year. This area has been a bit neglected. You can see that structure there has fallen down. So what I'm going to do is try and fix that first. And by fix I mean stick it in the ground and hope for the best. digger of some sort, some kind of digging device. If only someone invented a digging device, Emma. Where's my digging thing? This is the digging device I meant, the digging device I meant. Um, this little digging thing, it's like a little pointy stick. Very good for making holes, this thing. I think it's called a, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a bulb planter thing. It's just got a pointy stick. It's a pointy stick, that's what it is. Will I ever remember the name of anything? No, I don't think so. Right. Come on. Right, I've just decided this entire structure is just stupid. It's just gonna keep falling down. I don't want it anymore. These are my raspberries here. So this one's doing really well this year. This one's definitely dead. That's dead, isn't it? Let's get that out. You're dead, mate. Never mind, you tried. And this one here is alive. So we've got two raspberries, which should be fair, is enough raspberry plants, I think. But I need to think of some kind of structure for them, so I'm gonna have a think about that. 
actually it might have been quite nice to put them over the archway could they do that do they grow over archways oh i don't know now that's a really nice idea to have like raspberries over an archway i think you can i just did a quick google i can't actually find any pictures of an archway which is a little bit worrying like i can't find pictures of someone else that's done it but apparently online it does say you can train raspberries and blackberries over archways so should i just try and train them over the archway then yeah let's give it a go because my thoughts being that that would take care of that archway forever i reckon i've killed him now oh no oh god mate mate ah god that was my shovel ow oh come on out the ground into here where are your roots there they are sorry 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 please don't die right i need you to grow that way it mate yes now i need you to grow up okay you need to grow up <laughs> oh that's the biggest spider i've seen in my life Right, I have no idea. I'm so scatty today, have you noticed? I am literally bouncing all over the place. I don't know, is that you, Einstein? Don't add to it, Einstein, don't. <laughs> I have no idea if this will work or not, but if it does work, what a fantastic thing to have over an archway. I was thinking the other day, it'd be nice to have one archway that kind of takes care of itself every year, and I don't have to specifically plant up. Raspberries would be lovely. I was thinking a rambling rose, but I think raspberries is, is probably better. It does say online that they can grow over archways. So we've got one either side of the archway now, pointing towards it and hopefully they'll just sort of grow over it. And then this, I can just wander under it like Mary Poppins and just pick some raspberries. Does leave the question of where do the sweet peas go? I think I'm probably gonna put some of them around the teepee. What do you think, Einstein? Actually, you don't get a say in this. Sorry, mate. I'm just going to fix this archway back together because it's been a little bit neglected and the um, the wire over it, the mesh, is coming away a bit. So what I'm going to do is sort of tie it all back in. There we are, just sort of sewing it together. Like that. Oh god. Not like that, not like that at all. Right, like that. There, that's it. I always like to have something in rather than nothing. That wire doesn't come quite down enough, but I think it'll be okay. I am breaking these up as well. They're in quite a big pot. You can just whack them all in together, but I'm just sort of making sure they're in a bit more of a line, even just like that, to be honest. Yeah, that's good. Thing is, I don't know what to, I suppose I have to tie some twine then, won't I? Yeah, of course I will. You up like that. Right, I just need you to stay upright and don't let those slugs get you. All right, guys. to do I tried to do a really whimsical shot then of me um me watering them and uh, I just murdered them all I just killed them all <laughs> as I walked away I just completely flattened them why did I do that can I save them guys are you savable <laughs> I literally just lured them into a full sense of security and then just like smacked them around the head I'm so sorry guys <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> there you go please don't die right i think i 
done almost everything that I actually set out to do today. Um, the last thing that I want to do is, a lot of my broad beans are now growing, but they're growing quite tall, so I've had to take that fleece off of them because they're like hitting the surface and getting angry that there's a roof. But some of them have been nibbled a little bit by slugs and snails, which is a little bit frustrating. So I'm gonna put a little bit more strolch down. I'd say like we've had pretty good germination with these actually. Um, I probably will buy a few plug plants to fill in the gaps where they've just not grown or the foxes sat on them or something. Um, but you can see that that one there has been nibbled. So I think we need some more strolch. do for them to be honest unfortunately they're, they're most vulnerable but they're also they're most delicious to slugs and snails when they're little so there's nothing else I can do I just wanted to show you super quick because my onions are growing they're actually sprouting some green which I assume means they're growing this is an onion and I've got a very little bit look green green they're growing it's so amazing that they're actually growing in here quite a nice little tent in here sheltering i could come under here i'd like to lie under here sometimes when it's raining maybe not <laughs> anyway i hope you've enjoyed my friday friday vlog if you have do subscribe to my youtube channel and i will see you again hopefully next week on monday and hopefully fingers crossed the weather starts to brighten up a bit it started quite sunny today but it's ended rainy so <laughs> there you go welcome to british spring i will see you again next time thank you so much for watching bye